Hello and welcome uh, to our April Conversations, Red Bank Church of Christ. Uh, I'm Tommy Stone. Uh, again, we have with us uh, Steve Lusk, our discipleship minister, and Blake Hayes, our youth minister. And we have a very special guest today for our April Conversations. Uh, we have been doing these uh, for several years, trying to highlight ministries that are going on in our brotherhood and, and talk with some people that we think might be of interest to our members and beyond. And so uh, today we have Bobby Ross Jr. with us. Uh, he's the editor-in-chief of the Christian Chronicle uh, newspaper, and uh, he's going to get a chance to talk a little bit about that here in a few minutes. Uh, Bobby joined the Christian Chronicle in, in uh, 2005, and he's been in all 50 states and 14 countries doing reporting uh, for the Chronicle. As editor-in-chief of the newspaper, he oversees everything. Uh, the, the news and the editorial functions, while also being the lead national writer. He's a former religion editor for the Oklahoman and religion writer for the Associated Press. He's a 1990 jur journal journalism graduate of Oklahoma Christian University. Uh, he's received numerous awards uh, for his work, and uh, he and his wife Tammy are longtime members of the Edmund Church of Christ in Oklahoma, where Bobby is a deacon and also serves as a kindergarten Sunday school class teacher. So what, what a wide range there uh, of experiences. Uh, and we may even have questions about that because that's pretty amazing. Uh, has two sons, a daughter, daughter-in-law, and this says an absolutely perfect grandson. Uh, so that's wonderful, wonderful to hear. I, I think Steve would probably have something to say about that too. And a granddaughter Bobby, on so, the way. So, <laughs> Oh, good, good. Excellent. Bobby, we're so thankful and honored that you're with us. Uh, we do take the Christian Chronicle here uh, and uh, look forward to getting that every month. Uh, and um, I, I, I regularly check in with the website. So we'll get a chance to talk about some of those things. I'm going to turn it over to Steve to ask our first question, get the ball rolling here. Yeah, first of all, let me just say, Bobby, you're just a grandparenting rookie. Uh, I've got nine <laughs> grandkids and and uh, several foster grandkids as well. So uh, wow. uh, uh, you, you're you're getting there, but it, it's great. And we should have had these grandkids first, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, we should have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're they're so much better. Uh, anyway, we're 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 thankful for that and and happy for you and for your kids as well. Uh, tell us a little bit with your with your obvious journalism background. Tell us a little bit about how you came to be associated with the Christian Chronicle. Tell us that, that backstory. Oh, sure. I was, it was 2005, I guess, which is coming up on 16 years ago. And I'm sorry, I'm looking so red here. <laughs> uh, 16 years ago, I was working for the Associated Press in Dallas, had been in journalism about 15 years at that point, had three kids who were, you know, the younger two were, I think, kindergarten and first grade. I had a son and just started middle school. So we were pretty young and in our way. Wow. We were in our thirties then. And I got a call from Lynn McMillan, who at that time was the president and CEO of the Chronicle asking if I might want to meet him for lunch and, and knowing who he was, I figured something might be up, but he we met between Dallas and Oklahoma City, where, where I'm at and where the Chronicle is based, to kind of talk about things. And he he invited me to take my journalism talents and come to work for the Christian Chronicle. Said you can take a big pay cut and come work for the Lord. And, and so that's that's what I did. And, it, and it's been a, an even bigger blessing than I think I ever imagined that it could be you know, coming up on those 16 years, but that, that's basically how I ended up here, was just got a call one day and, and took the job, felt like that was God was leading me in this direction. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, awesome. You, go, go ahead. ahead. Um, uh, you kind of mentioned a little bit, just a, a shift from, from going into Christian journalism. So what, what has been y'all's purpose or mission at the Chronicle? Yeah, the mission of the Chronicle is to, I think, for the long, for the, you know, my time here, the tagline has been to inform, inspire, and unite members of Churches of Christ. So we, we're trying to do journalism, you know, 
to, to, to and, and I'll sometimes find it hard to, I guess we're trying to do the same quality and level of journalism that you would find. Like when I was working at the Associated Press or the Oklahoman here in Oklahoma City, but we're trying to do that from a, a Christian perspective and trying to do that in a way, you know, another, we've got a new tagline since Eric Trigestad took over as a CEO and, and president a couple of years ago, real news that, that honors God. So we're trying to do real news, but we're trying to do, do that in a way that is God on, honoring, that does reflect, reflect our Christian faith. We're trying, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to report on the, the, the important, serious discussions that we may be having as Christians, things that may be going on in society. You know, we're not trying to be a public relations instrument for Churches of Christ to say everything is great in Churches of Christ. We're not trying to be a teaching publication. We feel like you guys as ministers, that's your job. That's not our job. Our job is to report the news. So we're trying to be you know, inform, sometimes that's bad news, inspire is part of what we do, that we try to find stories that do inspire Christians, even under, in difficult circumstances, and then unite, we've also used the word connect, because some, it's real hard sometimes to know what exactly it means to unite churches of Christ, or, but I guess we probably connect is an easier way to look at that as far as, as autonomous churches bringing them together and having news and people and, and situations where we can kind of all come together via the written word and all maybe have a difficult conversation or an important discussion via the written word or, you know, the pandemic era via a Zoom broadcast like this, we found some, you know, new ways to communicate out of necessity as a result of, of being stuck in our home or in our office for this last year plus. Yeah, one thing I appreciate about your paper, uh, when, you, when you mentioned it's, it you kind of unites uh, or tries to connect, is just that we can get kind of myopic in, in what we're doing uh, here in Tennessee, here in Chattanooga, and uh, forget that uh, there, the church exists out there uh, and uh, <clears throat> all over the world and here in the States. And the way things are, are going in different parts of the world can open up some perspectives for us and, and help us uh, connect a little bit in a time right now when things are kind of divided in our country. Uh -huh. So I think that's a valuable ministry. I, I know this is a job and a passion for you, but, but certainly it's a ministry uh, to those of us who need that kind of perspective. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate people like you reading the Chronicle because we couldn't if nobody read it or supported it, we could we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So that that that's essential. And really well, let me just that. let me just pause right here and just say, uh, if if somebody watching this wants to subscribe to the Christian Chronicle, what's the best way to do that? Uh, the best way to do that is to either email us or call us and and give us your address, give us you know the pertinent information. Uh, a good email address would be letters at christianchronicle.org okay. would be a good email address to just kind of say, I want to subscribe to the Chronicle. How do I do that? Now that I've said that uh, an even better way is christianchronicle.org. See Christian and then C-H-R-O-N-I-C-L-E.org. I know sometimes that Chronicle is not the easiest word to spell, but christianchronicle.org, I think if you even go to our homepage, it, it will, okay. there are places you can click and, and get and subscribe both to our email and our print edition, which comes out monthly. Good, and we'll, and uh, we'll link to that uh, on our website too, in case you're watching this and, and would like to have that information. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Tommy, oh, were you going to say something? I was just going to say, if people are having trouble spelling that, they can go to the Old Testament there's there's a, there's a couple of books there called Chronicles, so oh, yeah. that'll yeah. help out. You know. Not to be confused with Corinthians. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. I may have to use that again, Steve. That's a that's a good way to do it. There you go. There you go. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, um, you you've mentioned your journalism background, and I have uh, I, I took a couple of courses in journalism in in college as well, so I know uh, probably just enough about it to be ignorant, really. Uh, but uh, uh, 
Uh, I do know that one of the things in journalism training, you're, you're sort of trained to be skeptical, you know, to sort of ask the not only the who, what, when, where, but also the why, and, uh-huh. and, and to maybe look at things, I don't want to say from a negative perspective, but at least from a perspective that you mentioned earlier, you're not so much a, a promotion type paper as much as a reporting type paper, which is different from a lot of the Brotherhood papers uh, that are out there. Uh, which I think is great, uh, but but uh, as you've done this now for the last uh, 15, 16 years and looked at our brotherhood from, from your perspective, even from that journalism perspective, uh, what are some things within our brotherhood that have uh, it kind of struck you on both extremes, either giving you cause for real concern, you know, there's some negative stuff out there about churches of Christ closing doors and all those kind of things, so some things that have caused you some concern and then some things that have given you a great deal of hope for the future, just from your perspective as a journalist. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess on the, the negative side would be just the fact that we, we are human. So there, we get into some legalism in some cases where we, we get real, we, we, we want to follow the Bible and do what the Bible says. And in, in, in some cases, we don't know how to do that in a nice way. So we come across real, you know, in some cases, judgmental and not real, not a lot of grace or love shown. And I think we've seen some of that in the past year with the pandemic, with, with things like churches, arguing over mask and people even changing churches because their church wasn't didn't take a strong enough position on mask and social distancing or took too strong a position on that and you know things like is the vaccine good is it bad churches arguing over that we've obviously had an election and in based on my email and the feedback I've got we've got a lot of of Christians who are just as divided as the world is over political matters. And I'm not that politics is not important, but it seems like in, in, a, in a lot of cases that politics have almost become a religion in themselves. So, yeah, you know, I mentioned difficult conversations. I'm not sure that we as a fellowship have learned how to have difficult conversations or you know we have certain hot button issues that that are important and we tend to in some cases want to just loudly argue our side rather than calming down a little bit and trying to understand why where somebody might come down on a different side so that you know that would be negative things Positive things would be some of the, the flip side of all of that. Just the fact that we are just simple Christians, people trying to live out their calling of, of, of God in their lives and, and, and take the simple words from the Bible and, and live those out and trying to, trying to love their neighbor, trying to you know, just, you know, communion on Sunday, the, just, just the simple things. And, and you, you know, the moment that I get, I don't know if depressed, depressed is not the word, but you know, I, that I get down on some of the negative things I talked about, then I'll run into just salt of the earth type people who remind me that most, what most Christians are like and what most people are just trying their best to, to live out their faith. I, I talked to a, 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 an elder from a, a church, a pretty hundred member or so church in eastern Oklahoma yesterday, and he was just talking, you know, we're just a bunch of rednecks trying to love Jesus, and it was a, it was a white church that had just hired a, a black minister, and they had a predominantly black congregation in town that was struggling financially, and the black minister said, well, we could go over there, and we could get their members to come over here to our church, but probably what we should do is try to get some money and help them because they, they like their church and they're, we, we can help them and we can, we can live out our faith that way. And, and I'm not explaining it real well, but it was just one of these 
situations where it was just people being Christian and loving each other and trying to find the best way to to live out their faith. So I think those would be some positives and negatives that would come to my mind. Yeah, it sounds like a, sounds like there was an effort to build a bridge rather than to widen the chasm, uh, you know, um, into cir- circumstances like that that are that are difficult in various communities depending on where you live and what the circumstances are. So uh, I can appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, thank you for that perspective. And, and again, I, I, I don't, uh, you know, there's kind of a negative perception that a lot of people have of the media in general. And when you're portrayed as a person in the media, a journalist, uh, sometimes uh, people want to kind of hate on what you do. And, and I've read the letters to the editor. <laughs> so I, I've seen some of the things that people criticize uh, the Christian Chronicle four, and then I've seen the other extreme in those letters to the editor where where you're praised, and I uh-huh. guess you kind of have to take all of that with a grain of salt and, and learn from it, of course. Uh, but uh, understand that there are people on both sides of issues, and I, I do think that you guys provide a valuable service to sort of bring out all of those points of view, uh, at least in a reporting kind of way. So, so thank you so much for that. Yeah, thank you, and we. We probably wouldn't be, it wouldn't be to it. We, we like to tell ourselves, I guess this sometimes when we do get the negative feedback is that it would be a pretty boring newspaper if everybody liked everything we did. <laughs> so, so to some extent, the fact that people are reading a few things and getting upset about it or sending a letter that they don't like it, that's in a strange way, maybe an endorsement of, of what we're doing, just the fact that somebody did reply and, and and felt you know that they feel a strong enough connection to our newspaper that when they don't like something they are going to respond to it it's it's funny sometimes that we'll have you know the same article we'll have people on both sides complaining that we were biased to the other side which one way to look at that is that you're doing something right if everybody's mad at you and then the other <laughs> side is you're doing something you're just messed up all over because you're, you're not pleasing anybody but that's yeah I, I read in a book something about you know we, we ought to be wary if all men praise us uh you know yeah. so uh yeah. th- there's uh there's that point to be made for sure yeah well <clears throat> we've we've been hit obviously with with this COVID-19 pandemic and it's influenced a lot a lot of people in a lot of different ways uh, we've had to do church here in multiple different ways and and just kind of find our way through the mud uh what what are some some lessons y'all have learned some ways y'all have adapted to this pandemic yeah it's been it's been crazy because i think in the bio that that was given of me at the beginning it talked about reporting from 50 states and 14 countries so in my time at the chronicle i've been accustomed to being on the road quite a bit and being able to go and and see things happening in churches firsthand. And and for the last year, up until about a week ago, I was working at home and still haven't been back to to in-person worship. My wife has autoimmune diseases and is real high risk if she were to get the to get the virus. So we're Mm -hmm. blessed that both of us have the vaccine. So we're hoping to get some kind of normal life back soon but that's kind of kind of I guess changed the way that I go about this and I've rambled so long the question was how what have we noticed during COVID-19 is yeah and what have you learned have you adapted and so forth okay okay yeah I think we've we've learned that you know I think we as a church y'all probably figured this out too we've always said that the church is not a building and this the situation's kind of forced a lot of us to realize that that really is true from a Christian Chronicle reporting perspective we've we've it's been interesting because I'm used to going you know getting on a plane or getting in the car and going somewhere and talking to people in person and and this is there's been a lot more zoom was something I'd never heard of until the pandemic hit and now it's just natural it's that we're on a zoom talking to each other and seeing each other face to face. So even, you know, even Lord willing, when the pandemic is over, I think that this is one thing that will survive is, is having some of these conversations, although we'll probably enjoy much more being in person and being able to give a handshake or give a hug. You know, I think 
I don't know, most churches, I think, have learned a lot about live streaming and about how to do video, church via video. And it seems like, you know, some of the people I've talked to anticipate that even after the pandemic, that they'll still invest in live streaming for people who are sick or traveling or for whatever reason that we've got a new way to connect to people. You know, I think everybody would love is hoping that the attendance numbers are back to some semblance of the level before the pandemic. But I think there's also seen people, a lot of church leaders in, would see a blessing in kind of some of the new tools that we've developed. Uh, let me think any other lessons. I think the, I mean, I'm probably missing a lot, but those are a few off the top of my head. And, and you've done a lot in, in, in the uh, last couple of editions of, of the paper to kind of highlight a lot of, a lot of those stories and uh, how people are adapting all over the place. So certainly yeah. great lessons to be learned there. Uh, yeah. for, uh, this, is a, this is an inexpensive way, relatively speaking, to be able to have a guy like you here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, <laughs> virtually at least. Uh -huh. uh, rather than flying you in from Oklahoma or whatever. And, uh, you know, just recently we had a conversation with a guy who was in Australia, one of our missionaries. And, you know, it, it's been able, we've been able to link with missionaries via, via this. I know later uh, this year, Tommy and I are both going to be involved in a, uh, a Zoom gospel meeting in uh, um, Liverpool, England. So, you know, uh, there, there's all kinds of opportunities that are opening up that probably we wouldn't have had or would have been much more difficult to have otherwise. And, and I'm glad that you guys have done that as well. And by the way, one of the things that the Christian Chronicle has done for us is it sort of uh, opened some doors for some conversations like this. Uh, you've given us some ideas by some of the people that you've highlighted and some of the ministries you've highlighted for uh, some future conversations that we can have with folks. So thank you for that as well. We appreciate oh, thank it. You. Thank you for reading that. Yeah. Uh, we, we want to close up here with, uh, and, and our time's almost gone. We want to close up with uh, maybe an encouraging word you've got uh, for uh, the church uh, based on uh, your perspective. Uh, if you got a quick uh, word that you want to say, maybe a scripture or maybe a, a thought about, uh, about something that could encourage us. Yeah, I just think it's, it's just encouraging the, the we, we, we have a, a com, you know, we have a, a worldwide body of believers. And in some ways, my, my boss, Eric Trigestad was kind of pointing out that in some ways, this pandemic that we would that we've been through has, has, has kind of put all Christians around the world, put us all on equal footing. And it, it's interesting that here in the United States, some of us have, it's, have seen it as suffering and we're ready to get back to normal. But you know, he, Eric was telling me about Christians in Africa and in the Philippines and places like that. And they're in some cases just almost overjoyed with the fact that finally we're on equal footing. You, we get to suffer together, <laughs> which is kind of interesting if, 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 when you look at it like that, because in, in some I think there's been some thought maybe in, in, in the past that we Americans that we're rich and that everything is always going to work out for us. Whereas epidemics, pandemics, things like this are things that happen elsewhere. And this, this has been one of those things that reminded us we're all at, at God, at, you know, God is in control of all of us and, and no matter the circumstance, we're in this together. We have brothers and sisters around the world. And, and so to me, that's encouraging just to realize that we are a worldwide body of believers and that even, you know, we've lost a lot of people in the pandemic, but, you know, we're all going to be, be together again at some point and that this, it, it's all temporary as, as the Bible teaches us so plainly. Bobby, we're so thankful for you and for what you guys do, uh, for taking that pay cut to do what you do uh, and, and use your skills uh, to encourage us uh, and to let us know what's going on, uh, not just here in the States, but, but abroad. It's, it is an encouraging thing. Uh, and we, we want to take time here at the end of our discussion to, for prayer. Uh, Steve is going to leave some prayer and just pray for you and your family. 
and uh, the Christian Chronicle family and uh, our body as a, as a, as a whole. Uh, and uh, just thank you so much for spending time with us today. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate I appreciate you guys so much. Appreciate you yeah. having me. Okay, let's Steve? pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the many ways you bless us, Father, and we thank you for the uh, just who you are and what you mean to us, what you've done for us, and and just just for the fact that we can rely on you. And Father, we thank you at this time so much for. Bobby and for his family. I pray your blessings to be upon them. I pray that you will continue to keep them safe in this time of pandemic. Uh, watch over and protect them. Be with his uh, growing extended family as uh, grandchildren are coming on the scene. And we just pray that you'll bless he and his wife to be the kind of grandparents that will continue a legacy of faithfulness for uh, generations yet to come. We thank you for his work with the Christian Chronicle. We thank you for those who have preceded him in, in uh, founding this paper and, and continuing this work, Father. And we just ask your blessings upon all who are involved. We thank you so much for the news that we gain uh, from it about what is happening in our brotherhood around the world. Uh, it, we thank you for it raising our awareness of uh, people in sometimes difficult circumstances, yet that are still uh, using their talents and abilities and opportunities to expand the kingdom, to grow the kingdom. We also thank you for the challenges that, uh, that they expose, uh, that they show us that, that we need to face and for opening up avenues of discussion. Uh, where we can talk about our differences and our struggles and, and the things that we're facing and, and perhaps uh, grow and encourage one another as a result. And we thank you, Father, for, for that forum for doing that. And we ask your blessings upon them as they continue to do this good work. And we pray that uh, uh, they will continue to be a blessing to uh, many for many years to come. Uh, Father, we are most grateful for just being a part of your kingdom. Uh, we're humbled by the fact that uh, uh, we're a small part, and we pray that uh, we can do whatever good we can, where we are, when we can. And we pray, Father, that you will use us in ways that uh, we cannot even imagine, because we know that your power working in us is, is far beyond what we can even think of. Thank you, Father, most of all for Jesus and for what he's done for us and what he means to us, what he continues to do for us. We thank you that we can approach you and that your Holy Spirit intercedes and and uh, translates on our behalf when we struggle to communicate with you. We thank you, Father, for this privilege of prayer. Uh, we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, and amen. 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 Remember, christianchronicle.org. Go check it out. And uh, thanks again to Bobby Ross Jr. for joining us for today's conversation. God bless you all. Thank you. Thanks.